right. So we're going to do one more change of variables example. Um, I thought about throwing a function into this one, but let's just do an area problem. Here's a region in the plane. Okay, it's bounded by a couple of lines through the origin, y equals x, y equals 2x, and it's also bounded by a couple of hyperbolas, right? y equals 1 over x, y equals 4 over x. We want to find the area of this thing. Um, so there are a couple of approaches. There are some things you could do, right? We could find all four points of intersection here. I, I found two of them. This is 1, 1. That's 2, 2. We could get the other ones, um, right? And it's... It's not that hard to do. If I put y equals 2x in here, then 2x squared equals 4, so x squared is 2. Um, all right, so x is what? Root 2. y is 2 root 2. Yeah, we can, we can go through this. But um, the only reason I would do that is if I wanted to do the integral in terms of x and y, because then I'd have to figure out how to carve this region up right into, into pieces so that I could kind of do upper curve minus lower curve, right, the way we'd normally do it, right? Set it up as a double integral, but it's going to have several parts. Which seems kind of gross. So how do, you, how do you do this a little bit more simply? Well, we want to come up with a transformation, right? So we want to take this and we want to transform it into something using some variables u and v, right? And well, using t if we're going that way, or, or t inverse if we're going that way, right? And once again, it's going to be easier to first come up with the inverse transformation. We can use the inverse to come up with t once we've got it, but um, that's going to be the easier way to go. So how do we do this? Well, let's see. How do we describe these boundaries? And remember um, that the general goal here is we want to describe... We want to describe the boundary um, using level curves, okay? And right now, we don't have level curves. So let's think about it. Um, the lines are not so bad, right? I can, uh, I can do that fairly easily. Um, well, Maybe. Your first thought is maybe you just subtract x minus y equals 0. 2x minus y equals 0. Um, that's no good because those are two different functions, right? Um, x minus y is not the same function as 2x minus y, and the level is 0 in both cases, right? We want to change the level but leave the function intact. Um, so we think, well, how do we interpolate between this line and that line? What's the interpolating family? Well, the interpolating family is, is y equals mx, right? Where m varies from 1 to 2. That tells me that m is the function I want, right? Because m varies between two constant values. So what is m? Well, m is just y over x. So we could say, so let's let u, right? We'll use u instead of m. u to be y over x. And if we do that, then we know that u is between 1 and 2. What about my hyperbola? Well, you can see that each hyperbola is of the form uh, y is equal to a over x, right? Where a varies from 1 to 4, right? And for all the intermediate values, you're just filling in all these other hyperbola going like that. Um, so if we solve for A, that's going to be our, if you like, V. Maybe we should put U and V in from the beginning. Um, we'll let V be, what is it going to be? X times Y. And so then we would have that V goes from 1 to 4. Okay, so our rectangle over here in the UV plane, right, it looks something like one, two, three, yeah. Uh, looks something like this, right? Some rectangle D. Okay, 
We like rectangles, right? Areas of rectangles, those are easy. Let's, we're, let's work with a rectangle. So what we've defined here is we've, we've just specified how to get u and v in terms of x and y. So what we've defined is the inverse transformation. So that means that we have defined u v to be t inverse of x, y. And it's given by y over x and then x times y. All right. Now, remember that we've got two choices on, on how to proceed. Um, I can do the algebra to figure out what t should be so that I can apply the theorem, the change of variables theorem directly. Um, or I can use this helpful little fact here, which says if I've got the inverse, I can compute the Jacobian of the inverse, take the reciprocal, and then I'm going to have the Jacobian that I need for my change of variables formula. Um, why don't we do that? So here's t inverse. So what's the derivative of t inverse? The derivative of t inverse, all right, so that's going to depend on x and y, is going to be, so we do the x derivatives first, minus y over x squared, then y, then we do the y derivatives, 1 over x, x. And so the Jacobian is just the determinant of that. All right. So we multiply by x, that gives me minus y over x, minus y over x. I get minus 2y over x, All right? OK. Now, that means that the Jacobian that I want is going to be, well, the Jacobian should be in terms of u and v, right? Uh, so I guess right now what I have is that I've got u and v are actually t inverse of x and y. And so it's going to be 1 over the Jacobian of the inverse. So it's going to be minus x over, over 2y, right? But I want things that, you know, I, I just want to work directly with u and v. I don't want to work in terms of x and y, right? I'm doing, I, I'm going to end up with an integral in terms of u and v. I want u and v. Um, what do I do? Well, hey, here's a convenient observation. What's y over x? y over x was u. So we go, hey, u, um, there you are. So we, we're flipping that. We have minus 2u. We're going to do 1 over it. So this is the same thing as doing minus 1 over 2u. And remember that we take the absolute value in the integration formula. So we take the absolute value. The minus sign goes away. And that tells me that my area, area of E, is going to be, well, on the one hand, it's the integral over e of d area. On the other hand, now I know that it's the integral over, over d of the absolute value of the Jacobian, du dv. So that's going to look like integral from 1 to 4, integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over to u, du, dv, and you know what, I can even, I can do that, this is a double integral, it's easy enough, I can do that in my head, right? Antiderivative for u, log u, 2 to 1, log 2 minus log 1, so log 2, log of 1 is 0, so that's half log 2, multiplied by 3, 3 over 2, times the natural log of 2. That's the area for our region. Right. Not so bad, right? Uh, I mean, OK. Yeah, there's a lot of technical details involved. Um, but as long as you, once you get the pieces all put together, as long as you make the appropriate observations, it's, it's a hell of a lot easier than trying to do it in terms of x and y. Okay? Um, I'm going to leave it at that. 
uh, a good exercise for you to do, for you to try, partly just to kind of, you know, get your algebra skills and also just to confirm that this works, is from these equations here, see if you can solve for x and y in terms of u and v, compute the Jacobian directly and confirm that you do get 1 over 2u. Um, how might you do that? I might try something like, hey, I can solve for y here. y would be x times u. Plug it in there, okay? So then v would be x times x times u. So v would be x squared times u. Um, so x squared would be v over u. Um, x is positive, so take the positive square root, right? So um, x would be the square root of v over u. And you might find that it's convenient to write that as v to the 1 half u to the minus 1 half, right? Then you could, uh, you could plug that in here, solve for y, right? y is u times x, so it's going to be u to the 1 half, v to the 1 half. Okay, there, I did it for you. Right? So take those, take the derivative, right, of t. So t would be the transformation where x is this, y is that. Calculate the matrix of partial derivatives. That's going to be in terms of u and v. Take the determinant, confirm that you get 1 over 2u, or minus 1 over 2u, but the minus sign doesn't matter because you're going to take the absolute value. All right, um, so we've seen a couple of examples with change of variables. There's a few more in the textbook. This one might be in the textbook, actually. I don't know. I always do this one. Um, we're going to move on now. We're done with integration, at least as a chapter. More integration is going to come. We're going to need integration when we do vector calculus, but we're ready to move on. Talk vector calculus, talk line integrals. Um, first, we're going to do a little recap on curves, okay? Curves in space.